Ano ba talagang gusto ng mga riders sa isang scooter? Magandang design, matulin, or matipid? Whether it's any or all of the three for you, here's something that you might find interesting. The Zeho AE8. Pinagkaiba niya nga lang sa mga typical na scooter na nakikita niyo sa kalsada. This one's fully electric. Let's dive right into the spec sheet. The AE8 packs two 69 volt, 32 amp hour lithium ion batteries that enable a maximum range of about 190 kilometers on one full charge. Of course, to sa ibang electric two wheelers, that range is gonna depend on the load and the riding behavior. The battery powers the mid mounted liquid cooled electric motor that generates 16.76 horsepower. Wheel torque naman is listed at 250 newton meters, kaya it really doesn't come as a surprise kung gano kabilis lang to mag jump off the line. But we'll talk about that later. First, let's talk about the batteries. Tulad nga sinabi ko, meron dalawa, both of which are found under the seat. Very easy access lang din siya, unlike dun sa e E5 na review natin before. Labas natin parehas. Yeah. Charging time for these take about 4 hours with the standard charger. Merong fast charger na available that cuts it down to 2 hours. Tapos meron ding adapter na pwedeng isaksak para sabay sila naka-charge. Yun nga lang yung fast charger sa yung adapter, hindi pa sila binebenta dito. We'll update you guys once they're available and kung magkano sila. Charging options mo naman, pwede mong bunutin na ganito tapos isaksak mo diretso sa wall socket or pwede rin nakalagay lang dito tapos diretso na to the outlet. Mas advisable pa rin na galing dito kasi of course, mabigat itong mga to. 10 kilograms each yan. So if I were you, I'd only remove these kung wala na talagang choice. Kunwari na sa kondo ka tapos walang charging sa parking area mo. To answer one of the golden questions, magkano ang spare batteries? Well, dalawahan binibili to and they cost 100,000 pesos per pair. Ngayon naman, let's talk about the design. In case you aren't familiar, Zeho is a sub-brand na CF Moto. And kung pamilyar ka sa mga bike ng brand na yun, alam mo that some of those are actually pretty stylish. Ngayon, stylish din naman to, but it can also look pretty ordinary at the same time, if that makes any sense. If not for these ultra-sleek DRLs, mapagkakamalan mo talaga siya na typical na scooter. Pero para sa akin, pag mas kinilatis mo siya, you'll learn to appreciate the bike a lot better. These fairings underneath look pretty unorthodox, and that fender below looks pretty quirky as well. Pagpunta mo naman sa likod, sobrang aggressive ng design. The rear fairings and the grab bars actually match these fairings up front. Tapos medyo nakatago sa loob yung tail lights. And I'm pretty sure I've never seen those signal lamps in any other scooter before. Also, I like the decals on the sides. Hindi man sila kasama sa paint finish mismo, but they add a lot of texture. Tapos, ang ganda din na nakatago yung foot pegs dun sa gilid. In terms of dimensions, the AE8 measures 1,900mm long, 735mm wide, and 1,090mm tall with a 1,380mm wheelbase. Note that these figures remain the same even for the AE8 S Plus variant, but more on that other variant later. This scooter sits on 12-inch wheels shod in 180 front and 120 rear Pirelli tires. Now before we start up the scooter, there are a few things I want to show you first. Una, itong maliit na cubby dito sa ilalim. Kasha dyan cellphone or wallet or mga ibang cards mo or pera. Tapos dito din nakatago yung USB-A and USB-C charging ports mo. Oo, USB-C charging ports sa scooter. Panalo yan. Tapos alam naman natin may gulay board siya, pero meron din siyang kapares na hook dito sa ilalim. Para sa bags, groceries, or even yung helmet mo. Isa pa ay itong compartment under the seat. Even with the batteries here, medyo malaki pa rin yung paglalagyan mo ng gamit dito. Hindi man kasha yung helmet, pero kasha dyan yung mga bag mo, yung mga damit mo, or of course, yung chargers ng batteries. Ngayon, bago tayo umandar, here's another feature that you should also check out. The cushion sensor. Di ba yung mga typical na scooter, mayroong mga kill switch yung side stand na hindi magsa-start yung motor kapag nakababa yun. Ito naman, pag walang nakaupo dyan, hindi ito aandar. Sure, the system will start, pero hindi aandar yung electric motor kapag walang nakaupo. Here's how it sounds. Pag narinig mo yun, you're good to go. You can press this, tapos lalabas yung ready, tapos pwede ka na umandar. Pero, kapag wala pa yung ready na yun, naka-off pa siya, you'll be able to use the push and reverse assist. Just press and hold these buttons here to move forward or backward slowly. That's gonna be helpful especially in tight spaces like parking areas for example. Okay, before we hit the road, pakinggan muna natin itong scooter na to kasi kaya natin eh. May center stand tayo eh. Let's put it in sport mode. With a boost. Pagdating sa performance, just ko, matulin talaga ako sa matulin. 
Kahit yung pinakamababang eco mode feels very, very torquey. Tapos even more so pagdating sa street and sport modes. Yung initial acceleration mo talaga, pag piga mo ng throttle, dun mo talaga mararamdaman yung difference from one ride mode to another. Now, if I'm being honest, enough na talaga yung eco mode kung tutuusin. Since 60 km per hour naman top speed sa majority ng Metro Manila roads. Pero sobrang laking tulong pa rin talaga ng street and sport modes kapag paahon yung kalsada or kapag medyo mabigat na yung bitbit mo. Masaya rin gamitin yung higher ride modes pag kailangan mo lang ng slight boost for overtaking. Speaking of boost, meron din tong ganun na pwede mo gamitin pag naka sport mode tapos full throttle. From 97 km per hour, tataas pa top speed mo to about 111. Personally, I don't think you'd need it for a bike this size. It's too much power to be used on most roads outside our expressways. Sa handling naman, this one is as nimble and sporty as the design suggests. Like any light gasoline-powered scooter, ang dali nito iwas-iwas sa kalsada. Thanks to the grippy tires underneath, may confidence din naman kahit papano when cornering. Tapos, madali lang din magsisingit kahit given na medyo malapad tong floorboard sa ilalim. Dagdag mo pa na naka Brembo brakes to. Talagang solid yung stopping power. Actually, finlex nga nila yun sa harap kasi kung makikita nyo, butas yung fender dun para makita na Brembo yung nakalagay. Ang kulang na lang talaga dito sa standard AE8 variant ay yung dual channel ABS na available dun sa S+. For a scooter that can go this fast, kailangan mo talaga ABS. Ang isa pa siguro na babaguhin ko dito ay yung shocks underneath. Kulang sa play yung suspension nito kaya ang tagtag niya sa malubak na kalsada. Okay lang pag kunwari nasa loob ka ng CBD, Pero pag nasa malalang parts ka ng EDSA, tatalbog-talbog ka talaga. So before we sum things up, tingnan muna natin yung fuel consumption nito. Well, yung battery consumption, rather. So I listed down one of my recent trips. So I rode from Mandaluyong to Taft, that's 11 kilometers in total, and I used up about 12%. So basically, i-round off na natin, 1% is to 1 kilometer. So ang 100% mo, that's 100 kilometers. So you have two 69 volt, 32 amp hour batteries, and in total, that you're gonna need about 4.4 kilowatt hours to charge. Sabihin na natin, Meralco rates ay nasa 10 pesos per kilowatt hour, then that means you need 44 pesos to charge both batteries. So kung 44 pesos yung 100% mo, 1% mo doing more math, divide natin by 100, you're spending 0.44 pesos per kilometer. Ngayon, compare natin siya sa gasoline-powered motorcycle. Sabihin na natin, 50 kilometers per liter. Doon natin ibase para mas madali. At sabihin na natin, 60 pesos per liter ang gasolina. That means, well, you're spending about more or less 42 pesos per 50 kilometers sa gasoline-powered na motorcycle. Dito sa Zeho AE8, you're gonna spend about 22 pesos per 50 kilometers. So, ang laki na matitipid mo, ba? So, that plays into one of the pros ng electric scooter na to. Una yung savings talaga, kasi malaki talaga matitipid mo. Sure, kailangan mo pa rin ng registro regularly just like any other regular motorcycle, pero kung makakatipid ka ng 20 pesos kada 50 km, ang laki nun, it's gonna add up sa daily riding mo. Isipin mo pag naka 1,000, 10,000 km ka na, ang laki na ng monetary savings mo. Number two na pro, performance. Sobrang tulin niya kasi talaga. Gamitin natin yung favorite word ng mga Pinoy na riders, si Bak. Tatanong nila, kaya ba sumibak ng underbone nan or ng kung ano mang scooter? I'm gonna tell you, kaya sumibak ng big bike nan. It just jumps off the line. It's stupidly quick, I'm telling you. Tapos, speaking of performance, yung pangatlong pro niya, yung different ride modes. Para sa akin, sobrang big deal niya kasi you have eco, you have street, and you have sport. Una yung eco, nakakatipid ka sa battery pero hindi ka mabibitin sa power kasi it can still go up to 60 km per hour. Plus you also have street and sport that you can use pag marami kang dala, pag paahon ka, or simple pag pa-overtake ka lang. Speaking of convenience naman, isa pa yun sa mga pros dito, yung overall ease of use. Di ba nga wala siyang susi, tatap mo lang, aandar na, tatap mo lang, o-off na. Tapos meron ka pang gantong step through na floorboard and if you've ridden any scooter, you know how easy it is to mount or dismount a motorcycle like this. Dagdag mo pa yung mga features like cruise control, yung push and reverse assist. Pagdating talaga sa day-to-day -day use, like I always say, they really are gonna add up. Lastly, for me, isang pro, yung price. Siguro sabihin nyo, medyo mahal siya, 209,900 pesos. Just think of it as a higher displacement scooter. Wag mo siya ihalin tulad sa mga 150cc or 175cc scoots na nakikita mo sa market. It has better performance. Actually, so much better in terms of performance. It has the looks and it has all these features that can, like I said, make day-to-day -day use a lot more convenient. Of course though, hindi naman to puro papuri lang. Meron din tayo mga cons na kailangan i-address. And number one is yung suspension. 
more often than not, you're gonna be out there on EDSA, on C5, on major thoroughfares that, as we all know, aren't exactly properly paved. Ako, personally, I live in Laguna. Most of the roads there are kind of okay, but if you're gonna use this for your daily commute in the city, medyo masakit sa pwede yan. Isa pang con, of course, ay yung lack of ABS. I don't usually ask for ABS in small scooters, but for something that goes this fast, is something this powerful, you're gonna need ABS. Itong S Plus variant, meron na to, pero yun nga, hindi pa siya available. We're talking about the base A8 variant. It's not a deal breaker, but it's something that you should put into consideration. Last con, yung price ng spare batteries. Sure, I said that 209,900 pesos is a pretty solid deal for this electric scooter. But almost half that price for the two batteries under the seat? Ang sakit ng sa bulsa. But anyway, if I'm gonna give this a score out of 10, it's still gonna get a pretty solid 9.